Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by my channel. Definitely appreciate you taking the time out of your day to pay me a visit. It is March 12th, 2022. I just got done with what is hopefully my last major project of this boat this year. And I uh, wanted to take some time to just uh, give you a walkthrough of this boat. Um, if you've been following my channel for, uh, gosh, I guess this is the third year that I've been doing the channel. Um, I've had this uh, Bass Tracker 3 uh for the entire time that i've been doing this channel and i've had it uh this is gonna be my fourth year that i've owned this boat um so uh i've done some pretty major revisions to the boat uh through the four years that i've owned it so just wanted to give you guys a, a quick tour of it so let's start at the back of this boat so again this boat is a bass tracker three A 1982 Bass Tracker 3, 16 foot long and about 4 feet wide. Um, for the aluminum folks, it's a 1648 if you're familiar with that terminology. Um, I guess let's go ahead and start with the powerhouse. Uh, I have a 2020 60 horse Evinrude and um, I have absolutely loved this engine. Uh, when I first bought this boat, it had a 60-horse uh, Mariner on it. That engine lasted me about two years. Um, I ended up uh, destroying it, though, um, like many of the other old used engines that I've had. It just blew up. It grenaded. Um, but uh, when that Mariner blew up, I... Uh, debated whether I wanted to get rid of this boat or uh, just repower. And uh, when that Mariner blew up, I had already completed a lot of the major projects on this boat. And I determined I just, I like the fishing platform of this boat. It's a good size. It fits in my garage. You can see that it just, just barely fits in my garage. And um, really the main issue with this garage is these are really narrow single doors. Um, it's just wide enough to fit in here. So I ended up going with an Evinrude, um, mainly because of the warranty. So when I bought this in 2020, uh, I bought this in January, I bought it through Lake County Water Sports in Wakanda, Illinois. Um, Evinrude doesn't make outboards anymore, but Lake County Water Sports, uh, is a Mercury dealer. I think they're a Yamaha as well as a Honda. I uh, really recommend um, checking them out if you're in the market for a new boat or um, a engine. So uh, the Evinrude had a seven-year warranty on it, and it was a two-stroke. Um, the two-stroke, I didn't care all that much about. I just wanted to be as light of a 60 horse as possible with the longest warranty. And um, the closest boat or the closest engine that came close to that seven-year warranty, I think, was a Honda five-year warranty. Um, unfortunately, uh, about three months after I bought the Evinrude, that's when Evinrude stopped making engines. But they sent um, me a notice saying, like, hey, we're still making parts for them for the, the seven years that they're obligated to. So... I haven't had any issues with the engine yet. I really don't know that I will. Um, one of the other things that made me go with this Evinrude, which is really uh, an awesome feature that I didn't find on, on any other outboards, was an auto winterize. Um, so uh, I live on the Fox River, and there are some nice days in December that I just want to get out and fish. So it doesn't make that big of a difference that I just go out and then at the end of the day, I can just winterize the engine again um, all by myself. Not a big deal. It's really nice and convenient. Um, some uh, uh, things that I've done. So last year I replaced the transom on this boat. When I bought the boat, I knew the transom was kind of rotten and it... Uh, it was kind of at that point where if you stick a knife into it, the knife tip goes in. But along these supports, there were some areas where, like, the entire knife, like, goes through. So it was time. Um, so I replaced it with uh, just marine-grade um, plywood. 
Uh, just a few things about the transom when I redid it. Instead of using rivets, I used stainless steel nuts and bolts covered in 5200. Uh, it's worked out pretty nice. So next to the Evinrude, I've got a PowerPole Micro. Um, I'm not sure of the weight of this entire boat. I'm pretty sure it's within the 1,500 or 2,000 pounds that uh, PowerPole says the Micro Anchor is designed for. Um, this is something that I bought for the river to kind of hold me in place and it doesn't work very well on the river um the current on the fox river and the gravel bottom it just makes the power pole spike just kind of skate along the bottom so the power pole spike you can kind of tell that's pretty well worn down and that's all due to the gravel bottom on that fox river um now the power pole micro when i'm on lakes or um like a sandy bottom or mud bottom it holds awesome my only gripe when the power pole works is you only have one and that's really the most common complaint is when you only have one power pole the boat sways whether it's in the wind or in the current it makes uh you fishing out of the the front of the boat a little difficult because you're still moving around but it's still really nice to have so that's the power pole and actually, now that I'm making this video, I got to remember, I got to put my Coast Guard plate back on. Um, and I forgot to point out this power pole mount. So this power pole, I originally was using the clamp mount right here. And that clamp mount just was not working well for this large of a boat. It just kept slipping off and breaking. Um, now, of course, you could just mount the power pole directly to the transom. But with this boat and with how far that spike was uh down in the water it was too low um i tried it and uh, it just was splashing too much so i raised it up you know i don't know what that i think that's about eight or ten inches raised it up out of the water this is just bolted through to the uh the transom so that's what that hole is is um how i bolted it through the transom it's worked out really nice and um, yeah. So the the rear compartment here, uh, I've got my gas tank. Uh, it's either a nine or a twelve gallon. I don't remember exactly. I'm pretty sure it's a nine gallon. Um, the six gallon that I used to have uh, just wasn't enough. Um, so in the middle here. You might be wondering what this is. This is a Pro Mariner um, three bank onboard charger. I've got it mounted this way because I used to have all of my batteries right here. And this is a change that I made this year. So I've got my starting battery back here still. But I had two size 29 trolling motor batteries back here as well. Um, it's just too much weight. Um, I, I wanted to try to lessen up the load in the rear of the boat this boat sits really low in the water in the rear so i moved the trolling motor batteries up front i'll show you guys where that is in a little bit so um when i had my batteries here i had to create this um bracket for that pro mariner mount so that's what this electric plug here is for that is so that i can leave this locked and charging my batteries when I'm at hotels or out on the water um, or, you know, docked overnight at a resort or something. So um, the starting battery in this, nothing special, just a Walmart Everstart series. Um, I think it's a size 24. Um, so, yeah, not a whole lot going on back here. I just That's the rear deck or the rear compartment. Um I've got a little rear day, I'll call it a day box, I guess, but it's got the fire extinguisher, it's got an air horn, that air horn probably doesn't work anymore, I should probably replace that from, from all the rust, but that's what's going on there, uh, I'll normally keep um, some granola bars or other other snacks for 
when I'm out on the water for a day trip in here. Uh, this wasn't originally my idea. When I bought this boat, um, the person before me had already um, made this. And there used to be foam underneath this. So there's less foam, which is not a good thing when your boat sinks. So that's that compartment. And then this is the original live well. Um, I think this is a 20 or 25 gallon. It's not very large, um, but it gets the job done. And I'm going to be doing some tournaments this year. Uh, most likely in my... Uh, club that I'm a part of, but I think I'm also going to be doing one of the Fox River circuits. So I'll have that going for me as well. Let's move. Yeah. So uh, next up, uh, the seats. Underneath the seats, we've just got some general storage. Really not. Not a lot going on. I'll keep uh, GoPro stuff um, in there for day trips. Uh, Seat posts, snacks, water bottles, things like that. So, again, under the driver's seat, again, it's just general storage for, for day stuff. Um, again, a, a big shout-out to Lake County Marine. Uh, when they installed this Evinrude, my original one was just mounted to the side gunnel here at a, at a really weird, stupid angle. But they custom fabricated this chunk of aluminum to make it actually nice and perpendicular. Uh, really solid work, again, by Lake County Marina. So, um, some customization that I did to this boat. I first added an aerator to the live well. And that's just nice tucked right in there. Got the airline going in there. Really important to have an aerated live well, especially when you're doing tournament fishing. My one complaint about this live well is it doesn't have a recirculation pump. So that just means more manual work for me. So I'll just manually uh, cycle out the water through the drain, pumping new water. This this live well doesn't even have an overflow, which is really annoying. But uh, again, it gets the job done. It just uh, requires some more work on my part. But I digress. So... Um, I added this uh, switch panel. I don't really know what you call it, but uh, this is the, the master power switch for everything in the boat. And uh, obviously you got two USBs. That's really important for charging the phone, charging the GoPro uh, batteries when I'm out on the water. Um, it's got a 12 volt. I've never used this 12 volt for anything. It's just kind of there. Uh, if this ever breaks, I can just grab the uh, the 12 volt charger out of my uh, car, I guess. This volt gauge never really worked. You know these these uh, switch panels that you buy on Amazon, they're super cheap. They're very cheaply made as well. So I would I don't expect those to last very long. Um, this is the aerator switch, uh, so that it can cycle automatically or just have it constantly on. Um, when I got the oven root, it added the tachometer and it's got the status lights on there. Uh, it's pretty nice. Very, very utilitarian. Um, not a whole lot of information there, but it shows you the, uh, the important information. And then we got a power pull, um, remote. Uh, just our standard switches. Not going to go into that. So, um... The other, like, kind of command station it's a set up for this boat, I've got an iPad Mini. Now, when you guys watch my fishing videos and you see the, um, the maps that I include in the videos, that is screenshots that I'm getting from this iPad Mini using the Navionics app. So the Navionics app, uh, really nice. It's it's subscription based. Uh, really, truly, it's not that much money for the yearly subscription. 
And this iPad mini, this is, a, again, a first-generation iPad mini. Um, if that is something that you're considering getting for your boat, which I do recommend, the iPad has to have uh, the cellular model to have the GPS. If you don't have uh, the cellular model, if you only have the GPS, or if, ugh, if you only have the Wi-Fi model, it won't have the GPS um, you'll still be able to load the maps and whatnot, but you're not going to obviously have your, your location, which, which is important. So, so, uh, we got the iPad mini and then, so new for this year, I just got done installing this today is a Garmin Echo Map 93 SV. Uh, the deal that Bass Pro Shops had going uh, was just too good. I did hem and haw whether I wanted the 73 or the 93. Um, I had a, a Striker 7 SV that uh, died last year. Uh, that 7-inch model was fine, but for an extra 200 bucks, I'd much rather have the extra screen real estate. And uh, it has the ability to do a pan optics sometime in the future. So that might be something on down the road. You never really know. But having that capability down the road is really nice. So um, continuing on down the boat. Um, this is the first major project that I did to this boat. So when I first got this boat... I'm going to show a uh, a photo of how I got this boat originally, if I actually have one. But to just visualize it, the deck originally came up to just right here. And there was a storage area over here. And then it was just open floor over here. I really hate that type of layout. Um, really the big thing that drove me nuts on that original deck was... The pedestal was right here, and anytime you're sitting on that and you turned around and you wanted to hop down, that was a huge jump down and real easy to twist your ankle. So uh, I redid the front deck on this. Um, Tiny Boat Nation, uh, if you guys have ever watched Tiny Boat Nation, there is a dedicated YouTube channel by uh, Michael Lopez, I believe is his name. He's really kind of the founder, as I understand it, to the Tiny Boat Nation. But there's a lot of really cool forums like on Facebook, and I'm sure there's other ones out there as well that really give you a lot of insight on uh, on how to modify these uh, these aluminum boats. But to me, it's like Legos. You can just build and expand on these aluminum boats so easily. It's not cheap, but... It's really easy. So I redid this front deck. I uh, redid a lot of the aluminum. I used um, eighth inch aluminum, uh, angled aluminum, and uh, and just rivets. So this front storage, this is uh, just kind of the, the stuff that you don't really worry about. Spare life jacket, um, the oar. God forbid I ever need to use the oar on this boat. I would hate that. Um, the light poles, uh, which actually I need to replace the light poles because those all got ruined when the boat sank. And then, um, yeah, that's, that's really all that I put in here. Sometimes like I'll have some overflow tackle on, on this side as well, but mostly stuff that I almost never really go into this. Um, so, uh, the other compartment is this is where I stored the tackle now the one thing that I added this year is this plastic storage container and the reason why I added that is my tackle boxes even though I had the Plano edge boxes which are like supposed to be the best of the best when it comes to rust proofing I was still having some rust issues, and the major issue with that is this boat, when it gets wet, it does not dry out whatsoever. So, and when I built these lat or these uh, compartments, I did not build them waterproof. This is, I just put it literally on top of the old floor, and the, the hole that I had in the boat was right over in that corner. So that's how this area was just always wet. So that's why I had that rust issue. 
So I added this storage um, plastic container. So hoping that if I ever get water in the boat again, it will at least be separated from the main tackle boxes. Um, so yeah, here's hoping that I don't have rust issues this year in my tackle. So uh, that's where I've got the tackle. And then, so you might be going, where's the batteries? Because there's no more storage. Well, there is one more storage compartment up here. This is really like the day box. Um, this is mainly just rope, bug spray, uh, fish attractant, stuff like that. This is, I really almost never go in here. Um, might be saying, why do I have wood in here? I never replaced the wood part of this. I added this chunk of aluminum, but that wood was in good condition and I just ran out of motivation. So that's why I didn't uh, replace that with angled aluminum. You get lazy when you want to go fishing. I'll tell you that much. So now you might be going, where's the batteries? So what I did, this used to just be a void space underneath here. We got kind of a, a little hidden compartment in here. So I uh, downgraded to size 27 batteries, which I'm hoping are going to be enough to uh, run this Ultrex for me for a full day's fishing. Those group 29s, I could never run them down. I could get like two full days of fishing out of those size 29s. So I'm thinking I'll be okay with these um, size 27s. So... Um, I got the breaker in there, so, uh, I'm going to go test this all out tomorrow, and, um, as long as everything is holding together, I'm going to, uh, re-rivet this thing down, and, um, I'll access it through the other storage area if I ever need to, to get in there. Um, so, those are the storage compartments. And as of last year, I had this Ultrex. So this is an 80-pound thrust Ultrex. This is the bare bones model, um, just the autopilot, not the um, the iPilot link. Or yeah, not autopilot, it's iPilot. Uh, but it does not have the link. Um, in hindsight, you know, I kind of wanted the link. Um, and I probably would not have gotten that garment. I probably would have went with the Humminbird. If I actually had a link, um, it, I guess it's, it's really fine for, for river fishing. You don't really, uh, worry too much about, um, you know, the mega imaging, really even sonar in general. Um, I don't use that much and I'm certainly not like using waypoints out on the river, but when I'm out lake fishing, it's, it's very nice to, to have those features. So I think, uh the future i'm definitely going to get the ipilot link last but not least uh so for the front electronics i've got an old lawrence elite 4x chirp model this was on my old boat as the uh the console model that i had and uh this migrated over to this boat as the bow um it's really nice. I, you know, I, I like it. I've owned Lorance's. I've never really had an issue with this Lorance. Um, I want to say that's about six or seven years old now. Um, and I actually, I had an Elite Four uh, HD or the, whatever the, the model before the Chirp came out um, on two boats prior. I really like that model as well. Um. But yeah, that has down imaging. It's got traditional sonar. It's got a small screen, but this is a small boat, so it's really it's perfectly fine. And again, the majority of my fishing is on the Fox River. I'm almost never really paying too much attention to the depth. Fox River is four feet at best in most areas. So, um, but it does perform well in uh, on lakes. You know, if I'm out fishing a 20 foot hump it works just fine as well one other thing i, I want to point out real quick is my rod tie downs so 
I've got two different styles. I've got the bungee cord and I've got this Velcro one. I started originally with the, um, the bungee cord and I've actually got two of them down there. Um, you might be able to see that kind of hidden by the, uh, the power pole spike there, but I, I always preferred the, the hook and bungees. Um, I always thought that was really a lot nicer than the Velcro, but I actually, I had one of those bungee straps break on me, uh, going down, uh, the river once. And there's nothing more scary seeing your rods start bouncing closer to the edge of the boat when you're on full, uh, when you're going full speed. So, uh, that's just kind of a relic. And, uh, I only trust my net under that one now. Um, and uh, I switched over to the uh, the Velcro one on this one. Now the Velcro's worked really well, but this is it's worn out. It needs to get replaced because this this is at the point where when I strap down my rods, those rods are still moving around. It's just it's worn out. Um, I've had this on here for the about three years, and that's when it's gotten worn out. So it happens. It's a usable part. So. Well, everyone, that is my boat. I hope you found this at least mildly interesting. Um, I'm hoping to get this boat out tomorrow again uh, for my first trip out of the year. I'm going to be hitting the Lower Fox River um, because the Carpentersville stretch of the river is not yet open. And I talked to the Kane County Forest Preserve. They do not think that they're going to be opening until March 31st. So these next few weekends will be on the Lower Fox River. Um, or I'll be taking the kayak out. Um, still have a few things to finish on the kayak, but the boat certainly takes priority. So thanks again. Hope you all uh, enjoyed it, and we'll see you all next time.